All right, guys, so it is that time of the year again that I have a love, like a real love and a real hate for, and that is new gear season. There's so much stuff being announced right now that it is, <laughs> it is mind-blowing. Canon uh, officially confirmed that they're coming out with the 8K camera, which is awesome. We don't know a lot of specs nor the cost, which is gonna be a factor for a lot of us. Sony, at some point, is supposed to come out with the new Sony A7S III and an A7 IV, I guess, which is, I didn't even know they were working on that, but that's supposed to come out. And with all the conferences coming out or the expos like WPPI, which is in Vegas, I know the CP Plus show got canceled um, because of the coronavirus and we're praying for the people in Asia um, that we can find a cure fast and uh, get people on the mend. And also NAB's coming up. So there's a lot of new gear coming out. And for those of us who've been waiting or want to upgrade our gear, I want to create a real quick guide on how you can sell your gear and get the most bang for the buck and basically when you should um, sell and when you shouldn't. So let's do this. All right, so selling your gear. Now, one of the things that I would recommend is when you're buying gear, make sure you buy gear with the boxes and paperwork if you can, because you'll find out on places like eBay, Adorama or different places, if it comes with a box and the original box accessories, they always sell for more. And it could even be up to $100 more if you have a box, which is crazy because the box really isn't worth anything, but people want to know that you care about your gear. Now, with that said, when you buy new or you buy used, save the boxes. I know it's one of those things that you don't have space for in your studio or you don't want a bunch of mess laying around or you don't want to become a hoarder. Nobody wants to become a hoarder, but saving your boxes, saving your paperwork, saving the warranty cards, things like that are gonna be a great way to let people know that you actually care about your gear, one. Two, they feel like they're having that new open box experience when they buy it from you used. I don't know about you guys, but when you open the box up and you're like, oh, like you get really, really excited, people want that open box or opening of the box experience, which is why there are channels, Unbox Therapy, that are all about just unboxing things and reviewing them because people love to see things unboxed and they like to experience that for themselves. So keep your boxes, keep your paperwork. Okay, so I know as working photographers, cinematographers, videographers, our gear can get really um, abused, especially in moments like weddings and you're out in the field or you're doing travel films and you're just in the element. Sometimes gear just gets worn down and that's okay, that's what it's there for. It's a tool for us to create with. Now with that said, there's a lot that we can do to protect our gear, like using lens, lens wraps, uh, putting caps back on our lenses, putting body wraps on our lenses, putting cages around our cameras. All those things are just gonna ensure that as we keep our cameras clean um, and in the best pristine condition that we can, later on when we go to resell, we're gonna get a, a better return on our investment, which is good. We're gonna get more money back for our used gear, which when we're wanting to buy that new lens, um, we're gonna be able to use the most amount of money from the used gear to go and buy that new lens. And sometimes you're gonna find that it's actually cheaper to sell your gear and buy new than to rent once in a while, which we'll talk more about in a second. But keeping your camera stuff really clean or the best that you can, especially depending on the kind of work that you do, is gonna ensure that you basically get the most back out of your lenses and your camera. So keep your stuff clean, guys. Okay, so let's roll into ROI or return on investment. Now basically what this means is this, if you bought the Sony a7 III at launch, which I think it was like $2,000 launch price, and now in 2020 you want to sell it, you're gonna get about $1,600 for it, right? So that's you're gonna lose about $400 on that investment selling it used. Now let's say you shoot weddings for a living and you know that you're gonna shoot four weddings for the next in the next two years. Now, a lot of us are gonna shoot a lot more weddings than that, but let's just say you shoot four weddings in the, in the last two years. That means that if you go off rental pricing, you could rent that camera four times and it would cost you $400, or you can own the camera of the entire year and only had to pay $400, or two years, sorry, and only had to pay $400. So basically you're losing $400 or if you're thinking, and you own it, or you losing $400 if you shop for weddings and you're actually giving it back every time. Now, the initial investment is expensive, but you're actually able to keep the camera over those two years and only lose $400, which is actually pretty amazing. I know for a lot of us, or a lot of people talk about renting gear it's cheaper and, and that, that is true when you're talking about like 
going and shooting a big commercial project and having to rent, you know, lenses for these projects, there's no way that you want to own a $20,000 cinema lens when you're only gonna be using it on a one-off type project, like an anamorphic lens for, or something like that for commercial, and you're only gonna use it one time. But when you're talking about owning a camera body for say $2,000 and then two years later, you're only losing $400. If you were to rent it, like right now, I think on lens rental or borrow lenses, it's about $99 for the rental with insurance. You're pretty much paying the same price. And so having a Sony a7 III or even an EOS R, your return on investment is actually really, really great. And depending on how much money you're making on those weddings, you're actually probably gonna be better off buying the camera and selling it used and then moving to a new camera later on because you're gonna, you're gonna be able to take that $1,600 and turn it into an a7 IV at the moment, right? Let's just say the a7 IV comes out in a month you'll be able to take that full amount and put it towards that new camera. So I think buying used makes sense for a lot of us because if you now if you were to buy a Sony or a year later you were to buy the Sony for like 1700 and then you lose 100, that's a pretty good deal for actually getting to own the camera. So again, just make sure that you know what you're getting into the camera for and what you can sell it for, or estimate sell it for a couple years later. Now, if the Sony a7 IV comes out today, your a7 III is probably gonna drop quite significantly, maybe even down to $1,300. So knowing when to sell your gear and knowing the market is huge, which goes right into my next tip, watch the market and know the market. A lot of times we're gonna have great indicators on when the next camera is gonna come out. Sometimes they spring it on us, it's like, wow, they came out with this camera and we weren't expecting it. Like the, the Sony a7 R4, I think people that had R3s, they had no idea that the R4 was gonna drop um, or come out the, the way that it did. And so I think it was a surprise for, so if you had an a7 R3, you probably didn't get the maximum um, price on it because the time that the R4 came out, the R3 was already dropping in price. But right now, if you own an A7 III, like I was talking about earlier, you're gonna be able to sell that camera at a pretty good price right now, especially if you don't have any events or weddings or you don't need the camera at this moment, you'll be able to take that camera, sell it for your maximum amount, and then turn that over and buy the new and latest gear if you want to. But try to stay up on tech, watch rumor sites, and also too, like trade shows will give you a good indicator um, you can talk to people. I know Sony, uh, Fuji, Canon, when you go and talk to them like at NAB, um, they give you a little subtle hints like, yeah, that could come or you'll find out through interviewers on YouTube that, you know, like, hey, they are in development of certain cameras. So just keep that in mind that when you are thinking about selling something, watching the market and knowing when to sell, selling high is gonna be obviously the best case scenario, but you definitely don't want to be underneath um, once the new camera is released. So just watch the market. It's gonna be hard to sell a Sony a7 III for $1,600 once the a7 IV drops or an X-T3 um, for $1,200 once the X-T4 drops. And so just be aware of that. Know that if you, when you sell, when rumors are starting to speculate, you're gonna get a lot more versus when the, when the camera drops, which is okay for a lot of us that need multiple cameras or need backup cameras, we're gonna be looking for those X-T3s and A7Ts when the newer cameras come out because they're gonna be make great addition to our studios um, for people that come and shoot with us or just for having great backups. So you'll still be able to sell your camera, but just watching the market is gonna, just, it ensures that you get the most for your, for your camera. This one's actually really funny because you all have photographers and cinematographers selling their gear online and the photos look just terrible. So this one is so simple, but take good photos or video of your gear when you're selling it. Sometimes I know as like <laughs> photographers or video, we get super lazy, right? We're just like, oh, this will work. We put it on Craigslist or on eBay and we think, okay, no big deal. They're gonna buy it no matter what. But having better photos is gonna be just a faster way to sell your gear. Like if I'm scrolling eBay for something used and I'm gonna buy the lens or the camera that looks the best in the photos. This is just the very base of marketing, guys. So take good photos or take great videos of your used gear because it's gonna help you sell your gear for more and faster um, with the used gear that you're competing with online. Okay, so before you roast me and tell me about how you don't need the latest and greatest gear to take amazing photos or better video, I agree with you. Storytelling, composition, color, all these things just 
always surpass gear for the most part. Story is huge. Um, but with that said, there's a lot of people that want to upgrade their gear. Maybe you're two generations behind or you're a generation behind. Say you have the EOS R and you need two card slots for weddings. You want the R5, naturally. And so you're gonna want to figure out how to maximize and sell that, EO, that EOS R for the most amount of money moving forward. And so these are just some tips to help you do that. I hope that's helpful for you guys. With that said, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, happy shooting. See you guys next time.